Hear me okay? Yes, great. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. I know some people have traveled quite a distance. Uh, my name's George Farmer, and I'm very privileged to be able to give you a workshop today. So we are going to set up this beautiful Awaze Highline 300 Aquarium. I'm going to show you exactly what we do to set it up, take you through the whole process step by step, make it really simple to understand. Please feel free to ask any questions. Uh, there will be a Q&A session at the end as well. And I hope you really enjoy it. Uh, my name's George Farmer. I'm a full-time aquascaper. So it's basically my job to make uh, beautiful aquariums, which is great because it's also my hobby. And I've been doing it for quite a few years now. I travel all over the country, all over the world doing this. And uh, thanks to Awaze for inviting me along <clears throat> to Norwich, a beautiful city, to be able to do this workshop for you guys today. So uh, I think it's worth kind of giving you a definition of aquascaping to start with. So aquascaping is the art of making beautiful aquariums. So many of you may have an aquarium at home. Hands up, who's got an aquarium at home already? Okay. Um, and the, I would say the general perception of an aquarium is something that kind of sits in the living room, maybe gets some algae, has sort of fluorescent tacky ornaments in there, and doesn't look so beautiful. Uh, what we're doing today is going to show you how to really create something that looks natural, beautiful. We're using natural products. Uh, we're using live aquatic plants that will actually grow and thrive in the aquarium. Um, these will help create a beautiful and healthy aquarium environment for the fish as well. And we'll also be using natural materials, so uh, wood and rocks. And the overall impression will be something uh, that looks really natural, really beautiful, and helps us to kind of reconnect with nature. So I think in this modern society that we live in, everyone's plugged into their mobile phones and the internet. I think it's um, a really good idea to have something in your living space that can really help you connect with nature. Um, this is especially important uh, if you're living in a city, maybe you don't have such a large garden, you can bring this garden indoors, have an underwater garden and really appreciate the nature going on inside. So I'll just take it step by step. We'll go nice and slowly. There's a few people that don't have an aquarium or is any, have you had any experience with aquariums at all, you, you guys? You have some, okay. Um, so I'll, I'll keep it very beginner friendly and hopefully you can all learn something, get inspired and hopefully do some aquascaping for yourselves at home. So let's talk about the aquarium itself to start with. Uh, like I said at the beginning, this is an Awaze Highline 300. It holds 300 litres. It's a high-end product, a premium product. So I have one of these at home, very good quality. Uh, German designed, uh, built in Italy, and uh, a proven performer. Uh, I'm a big fan of this style of aquarium. So, first thing we do is think about uh, maybe planning the aquascape. So, Rather than just going and buying random bits of kit from your aquarium shop, you know, have a, have a think about what you actually want to create. So you can use the internet, YouTube, Facebook groups, forums. I do have my own YouTube channel. I give myself a shameless plug. If you just type in George Farmer on YouTube, you'll find my videos. Lots of tutorials and step-by-step -step videos on there uh, so to watch at your own leisure. And it's a really good idea to plan the aquascape. So we need to consider the overall design. So you might get inspired. You might see something in a book, a magazine, or the internet, and you think, I want to create that. So you can look into that in more detail and, and figure out if your aquarium is actually capable of, for instance, growing those plants. I won't go into too much detail, but some plants are harder to grow than others. So we'll talk about more about the plants in, in more detail later, but just bear in mind if you see something stunning and beautiful on the internet, it might not necessarily be so easy to do it yourself. You might need to do some more research. But what we're doing today, we're going to keep it really simple, but still create something really beautiful that anyone can achieve at home. So the first step we do is install what we call our substrate. The substrate uh, serves a couple of purposes. The first is to anchor our plants. So we're using live aquarium plants. They need to stay in the bottom of the aquarium. So this helps to anchor them. It also helps to feed the plant roots as well. So these are live aquatic plants. 
just like house plants, they need feeding and to thrive. And the best, one of the best ways to feed them is with a good quality aquarium soil, which, is got, which we've got here from Tropica. So let's open that up and talk about that in more detail. So this is not like digging up your garden. It's an actually a commercially prepared soil. It's almost like pelletized, small like balls uh, that have been baked, like clay, clay and peat balls, basically. And one of the advantages to this stuff is that it doesn't need pre-rinsing. A lot of gravel and sand is very, very dirty, and you'll need to rinse it off first. But with this stuff, you can just literally put it in your aquarium, and it's ready to go. Like I said, it feeds the plant roots, and it also has uh, some benefits for the water, the aquarium water. It actually softens the water slightly, and it reduces the pH. So it makes the water slightly more acidic, which actually creates a more healthy environment for the plants and the fish. So even if you have hard water at home, you can grow the vast majority of plants and keep the vast majority of captive bred fish, even with hard water, if you're using this soil. <clears throat> so we're going to use three bags in here. Like I said, it doesn't need pre-rinsing. And then we flatten it out. So this will, this will last indefinitely. If you, it, like I said, it does provide nutrients, food for the plant roots. And what I like to do is also feed the plants with a liquid fertilizer as well. <clears throat> so the plants are getting food not only from their roots, but from their leaves as well. And the nutrient content, the, the amount, the, the food content of the soil will last a lot longer if we use a liquid fertilizer regularly as well. So do bear that in mind. But this stuff will last for years. <clears throat> after a long, after kind of six months to 12 months, the grains can start to kind of decompose slightly and it will turn into almost like a bit of a sludge, but that's absolutely no problem. The only thing you need to bear in mind, if you do have bottom-dwelling fish and, and they're kind of actively burying themselves, it might cloud the water slightly. So do bear that in mind. So I'm just going to round in front and see if we're quite flat, hopefully. So as you can see, it's almost a black colour. It's like a very dark brown. When we get water in there, it goes even darker. And I like this because it's a really nice contrast. We've got the black background of the Highline 300 as well. And what this does, it provides a really effective contrast to the plants and the fish. So you can imagine, we'll be doing it later, but you can imagine the green, the bright green plants. You know, you can get some beautiful coloured tropical fish as well. And that, that will contrast with the substrate and the background really effectively. Another advantage of this Highline Aquarium is that all the equipment is kind of hidden as well. So we have a, an external filter, which is in the, in the cabinet here. That has a built-in heater. All the pipe work comes over here, and it's all hidden as much as possible, which makes it really great to, to aquascape with. We, you know, we want to be looking at the actual beauty of the aquascape itself. We don't really want to be distracted by like a heater or an internal filter, etc. So this is another advantage to the Highline 300. Uh, they do do other sizes. This is the 300 litre. They do a 125 litre, a 200, a 300, and a 400 as well. So options for every kind of living space size. Okay, so that's the soil added. Three bags we've used there. We could use another bag potentially, but three bags is enough for this aquascape. Okay, we're gonna move on to what my kind of favorite part of aquascaping is what we call the hardscape. So the hardscape is um, the, the hard decor, the decoration. In this case, we're going to be using wooden rocks. And in aquascaping, I like to use natural materials as much as possible. Uh, you can buy plastic plants, you can buy artificial decorations. Um, but for me, I like to keep it natural. I think it looks more beautiful. And Going back to what I said at the beginning, helps to kind of connect you with nature, which is a really important thing in today's, in today's world, I think. So, we start off with our biggest piece, 
which is this enormous piece of wood which has been sitting in my garden for the last 12 months or so, ready for today's event especially. So it's a perfect size for this aquarium and I've already figured out it's going to look really cool if we put it there, like this. So when we're positioning our hardscape, we think about focal points. So most of you have got phone cameras. Many of you may have heard of the rule of thirds. So uh, I don't know about your phone camera, but when you go to take a photo, sometimes there's a, a grid on there, and that's the screen divided into three equal parts. This is to help you with the rule of thirds. So when you look at that grid, there's three kind of, it breaks the, the, the screen, in this case the aquarium, into three equal sections, horizontally, and vertically, and then where these lines kind of, if you imagine these lines where they cross, that's the, the kind of most aesthetically balanced uh, point. So in this case here, the main weight of this wood is around here, which is around about a third of the way along. So this is already got a good composition. Composition means how uh, the image is positioned in the frame, basically. That's what composition means. So a beginner mistake would be to um, not use enough hardscape or big enough hardscape. They might just buy this one rock from the shop for this aquarium, and they might even put it directly in the centre, uh, maybe, maybe near the front, and that would be their, their hardscape. You can see that's not very impactful. It's not very well balanced. It's, it's central, which is a common mistake, and the, the trouble when you place something centrally is actually you're creating symmetry. So... There's open space here and open space here are equal and your eye actually doesn't settle down. It bounces from left to right. So actually, much better to have it off to the side. So something like this. Looks much more balanced. Okay, let's move on to our biggest stone here. This is called Mini Landscape Rock. And it's actually... I talk, about, I talk about character of a stone, so it sounds a bit funny maybe to some people, but if you imagine, um, in, in contrast to this, if you had like a very smooth boulder or smooth stone, it wouldn't have much character. But this has got lots of gouges, lots of like white veins running through it. It actually looks more attractive once it's wet as well. In fact, I'll give you an example of that right now. <clears throat> it's good for weightlifting as well. You see that changing. So it looks even more beautiful when it's underwater. <clears throat> so when you're, when you're choosing your hardscape, you know, do it carefully, go to a decent store. We need to think about where we're going to position it and how we're going to position it. So first of all, I know I'm going to put it around here. There's lots of open space there for it. And now I'm looking at what's the best kind of, the most interesting side that we can see so I think the side that I sprayed with water will look best facing the front. What I'm doing now is just making sure it looks as natural as possible. So you can see these lines in the stone here. This is called the strata. This is the natural lines. And we can use that to our advantage. We can have these lines deliberately kind of pointing towards the main focal area, which is this point here. Like we said, it's about a third of the way along. So that looks, at the moment, I'm quite happy with that. And then we'll move on to our third stone here. Again, looking at it at all angles, what's the most interesting side that we want to see? Have a look at that strata and try and line it up appropriately. So we've got the strata running this way. Let's kind of line that up. With this one here. So we've got this continuous line here. And we've got this line here. And they all kind of meet, they converge to this main focal area here. So just an example of rather than just randomly putting your hardscape in the aquarium, 
do give it some thought, you know, look at the hardscape in all angles, all positions, and think about how is it going to best achieve, you know, visual impact and balance in the aquarium. <clears throat> Okay, I'm thinking I might even swap these two over. And this is another good learning point. You know, you notice that I'm doing it dry. We've not filled the aquarium up with water first. You can imagine the sort of mess I'll be making now. This soil is actually, once it's wet, it does become potentially quite muddy. So it's definitely a good idea to do this dry. And we're still using that. Um, we're still using those guidelines of the strata, the same principle, those lines kind of converging to this point here. And then again, we can use this stone here. Let's take that label off. Again, looking at the most attractive side, which is this one here, and then using those strata to line up appropriately. <clears throat> okay, I'm happy with that now, much better. So with Hardscape, there's so many materials you can choose from, but a couple of rules is if you're using wood, just use the one type of wood. We don't generally mix the types because they don't look so natural. And the same with the stone. If you're using stone, generally stick to the, that same type of stone. In this case, this is called mini landscape rock, and this wood is a, a regular kind of driftwood, just a jumbo size. So just to give you an idea, you'd pay maybe 50, 60 pounds for this piece of wood, and then you can pay by the kilo, kilogram for the stone, normally about four pounds per kilogram. There's probably about 15 kilos here to give you an idea of costing. Okay, I do have some more wood. It's looking a little bit empty around here. So again, I'm not just putting it in there randomly. I'm trying to, trying to use the lines to make it look like maybe one bigger piece of wood. So we've got this natural kind of arc going around here, and we're following that on with this smaller piece. Bear in mind, we will be planting as well, and that's going to hide these kind of areas here. So it's going to look like you probably won't even notice there's two pieces of wood there. Might even add some more wood as well. See how it looks. So quite an empty space around here. Let's try and fill that up. And again, using this kind of curve effect, let's try and mimic that with this smaller piece of wood here. A uh, fun fact for you, I was playing around with this in my garden yesterday and my puppy kept running off with this bit of wood in particular. In fact, if you look carefully, you can see where he's been biting it. So... Okay, that's good for now. And then I do have another piece as well. So when you're doing this at home, you know, get all your materials together in your empty aquarium with some dry soil or sand or gravel, whichever your substrate is, and just take your time doing it. You know, I'm doing this in, you know, 20 minutes, however long it's going to take me. Um, but if you're a beginner especially, you might want to take longer. You know, set it all up, take a step back, have a look at it. Have a think to yourself, can I make that look any better? Is that as balanced as it can be? Have I got all the individual pieces looking as good as they can be? And then go back to it, make some adjustments, and just keep repeating this process until you're absolutely confident that you can't make that hardscape layout look any better.
Okay, good. So, <clears throat> just a refresher, we started off with this huge piece of wood here. This is like the main kind of event, the main focal point. And then we went into our uh, stone arrangements. This is obviously the biggest one. We've got the main focal area around here. And then we've used the two smaller stones to kind of complement with the strata all leading up to this focal area. And then we added our smaller pieces of wood to complement this kind of arch, this flow effect that we've got going across the whole aquascape there. So I'm quite happy with that. I think it looks quite natural. And it's going to be enhanced with this natural look once we add our live aquatic plants. Hardscape's complete. I can't emphasize how important, how important the hardscape is. If you want to create a high impact, beautiful looking natural aquascape, you know, really spend the time and the money, potentially invest in decent hardscape materials. You know, this lot, it wouldn't, you know, it's probably going to cost uh, over a hundred pounds for this hardscape in particular. But I think hopefully you'll agree it, it looks great. And if you imagine kind of, if you want to save a bit of money, yeah, sure, you can use a smaller piece, um, you know, cheaper pieces, but, you know, you're not necessarily going to get this beautiful impact. So, you know, you've invested quite a lot of money in a nice aquarium system. It's important to, again, invest in good quality hardscape. You know, the hardscape is like the backbone of the aquarium. You start off with a really strong hardscape like we've done today. You can quite easily create, you know, the full picture. With, once you've added the plants, a really high impact, strong aquascape. I normally start off with the foreground plants, then move on to the midground, and then go into the background plants. The reason we don't do the background plants first is that they tend to droop over, and then you, you have difficulty putting your foreground plants in. But all the plants we're using today they are easy plants. So, Tropica have a range of three types of plants from easy to medium to advanced. They've all got a label on there with lots of information on. But if you look at that color there, it's green. Uh, easy category, which means it's an easy to grow plant. It doesn't need too much light, doesn't need CO2 injection or lots and lots of fertilizers. So most people can succeed, can succeed with easy category plants. And that's why we're using them today, to show you beginners how, you know, how to create something that everyone can grow. So, this is called Eliocaris parvula. Don't worry, I won't be testing it at the end. It's commonly known as hair grass, and hopefully you can see why it might be called hair grass. Little blades of grass, like a hair kind of texture. So really easy to prepare our plant. Take it out of its film. Normally when you buy the plant from the store, it doesn't come with that anyway. So there we have our plant in its pot. Then we simply pull the plastic pot away. When I first started aquascaping, when I first kept my aquarium, I was like, oh, that's easy. Done. You have to prepare them. So take the pot out like so. And then you have this, uh, we call this mineral wall. This is the medium that the plant's growing in, in the greenhouses. So these are grown hydroponically. Some of you may know what that means. It means that the, the roots themselves are submersed in nutrient-rich circulating water where the remainder of the plant grows out into the air. And uh, this is called hydroponics. And it, it means it grows very well. The plant has lots of access to CO2 in the air, more access to light. There's less algae risk because it's growing in the air and not in the water, the, the plant itself. And then the nutrient-rich water circulating around the roots feed the plant and it grows really, really healthily. What happens then is we put it in our aquarium and then the plant has to adapt to its underwater growth, which we call submerged growth. So just bear in mind, it's really worth, if you can, buy the freshest plants that you can from your store. They're going to be the healthiest and give you the most chance of success. So have a, have a chat with a member of staff in the shop. Ask them you know, when their next shipment of plants in is, and then try to get them that, that same day or next day, and you're going to guarantee the freshest plants possible. So to prepare our plant, we carry on. We remove as much of the mineral wall as we can. We just kind of tease it apart. You can pull away gently the hair grass from the wool. And then rather than just planting that one big clump, we can separate that into lots of individual portions. What this does, it promotes uh, a carpeting effect. So what will happen is 
eventually the, the plant will send out runners and then all new leaves will protrude and eventually you'll form a solid carpet which looks absolutely fantastic. The more portions we split into, uh, the more economical coverage we get. So, you know, don't be lazy, don't just sort of split it in half, try to split it into at least sort of 10, maybe 15 portions. And then if we put, oh yeah, nice one, mate. So we just keep teasing it apart. So when you, once you've planted and eventually you add your fish, you know, you probably want to not, you consider what fish choice you've got. We can talk about more about that later. But with delicate kind of foreground plants like this, you know, you probably want to avoid boisterous catfish, this sort of thing, which you're going to dig around and uproot the plants. So just bear that in mind. And then we just keep repeat that, we're repeating that process. Take the pot out, remove the mineral wool. If there's a little bit of mineral oil left over, you can plant that, that's no problem. It's completely harmless. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to sort of foreground slash mid-ground plants. This is called Staragyne repens. This is from, originates actually from South America, from the Amazon. And again, from Tropica, easy category, it's got the green label there. Um, the labels are actually really useful, lots of information on there. You have the full scientific name on there, which is called Staragyne repens. The category of plants it is, either easy, medium, or advanced. So this is easy. All the plants we're using today are easy. And then it has where in the aquarium it should be placed. So this is front, so this goes towards the front of the aquarium, foreground plant. It has the product code there, which you don't need to worry about. And then on the back, it actually has what size it grows to in both its width and its height, and then its rate of growth. In this case, it's, it's five rates of growth all the way from the slowest to fastest. This is the second from the slowest, and then the, the continent of origin, origin, in this case, South America. So exactly the same principle as before with preparing the hair grass. Remove the pot. And then the, the mineral top tip, the mineral usually comes in two halves, which we can gently break away, like so. And then you'll find probably about between five, 10, maybe if you're really lucky, 15 individual stems. And you can actually tease them apart into individual stems. And again, this is gonna give you the most economical growth. So to plant, back in the day, we just used to use our fingers, but we've evolved. Now we use tweezers. And that's really useful for planting delicate plants, such as the hair grass. Just gonna pop that there for a minute. So real simple process. Grab your little plant look there, grab your tweezers, pop it in between your tweezers. And then top tip, plant into the dry soil. I always used to fill a little bit of water in and then plant into wet soil, but I find uh, dry soil is much better. The plant tends to stay anchored better when you actually eventually do fill with water. So top tip, plant into dry soil. So we're gonna plant all the way along the foreground here with our hair grass. So we'll start off in the middle, push it in as far as you want. As long as the roots are in contact with the soil, that's all you need. And then let go. And then sometimes the plant will wanna come out as you take your tweezers out. I'll show you what we do if that happens. So again, grab your plant in between your tweezers, pop it in, let go. And then if, when you take the tweezers out, the plant wants to come out, you can just put your finger on, pull your tweezers out, and then it will stay there like that. Now what I like to do is uh, plant in the center, plant in the right there, plant all the way to the left. And then what I do then is divide each into half, go halfway in between each plant. And then what that does, it just guarantees even coverage. And then keep doing that. And it's quite a therapeutic process. You know, when I'm doing this at home, I normally have some music on. 
I used to listen to dance music, but I've gotten too old for that now. I listen to classical. So this is a good example of what can happen when you pull your tweezers out, the plant likes to come out as well. So there we go. <coughs> All these. Pop them on there. Should I put them? Should I put them back on. So I've been in the hobby, I started the hobby in 2003, I had my first aquarium and then I quickly got obsessed with aquarium plants and planted tanks and then it took, I started writing for Practical Fish Keeping magazine in 2006, uh, which I'm still a contributor to, I'm, I'm on their Ask the Experts panel. So I kind of, you know, learned a lot very quickly in the hobby, you know, from starting it to writing about it in, in like two, three years. Um, and then I was, I was in the Air Force, I was in the Air Force for 14 years and I did it as a hobby in a kind of semi-professional capacity, helping out with workshops and trade shows and then 2013 decided to leave the RAF. I used to do bomb disposal and it was a bit stressful compared to aquascaping so I decided to do aquascaping instead and uh, that was yeah five years ago now so I've been doing this full time now for five years and it's a, it's a real passion of mine, you know, it's, uh, I'm very blessed to be able to do it as a hobby and a career and, you know, my, my passion is sharing it as well and that's why I'm here today to show you guys all about it. I really believe aquascaping and, you know, connecting people with nature really enriches people's lives and this is one of the reasons I'm so passionate about it. It's really, you know, when you have an aquascape and it's looking really nice and it does, when you've just it's got a zone out when you're just looking at it, you get, it's a really relaxing thing. You know, it's been clinically proven that aquariums can lower, lower heart rate, lower blood pressure, lower anxiety levels, very good for mental health. So these are all great, you know, benefits to not only aquariums, but in particular aquascapes, because you could argue that a beautiful aquascape would have even more therapeutic value than a regular fish tank you know these are more you know it's like a, a living work of art rather than just a, a generic fish tank so I'm just looking at the biggest gaps now in between the hair grass and then planting in between so hopefully in, a, in about six to eight weeks depending on what light we'll use on here and if we use CO2 injection, carbon dioxide injection, um, this will, I don't know if you guys know, but plants use carbon dioxide to grow. They photosynthesize with carbon dioxide and light. If we inject more carbon dioxide into the water, we can really promote faster plant growth. And you can actually grow you know, much more difficult, more demanding plants if you use CO2 injection. This is quite an advanced topic if you're not, you know, if you don't own an aquarium already. If you want to learn more, just Google it. Go on to my YouTube channel, you can learn all about it. Um, but if we did use CO2 injection and we had good lighting in here, good liquid fertilizers, then you could expect this to fill in a whole kind of lawn, a really nice kind of lawn effect in about four, five, maybe six weeks or so. Obviously, the more plants we put in there to start with, the quicker that lawn effect is going to take place. So I did travel all around the world doing this. I was in... Uh, I was in Denmark the other week, a uh, week before that was in Germany where I did a 28,000 litre aquarium in a zoo uh, with, a, with a team of guys. Um, I was in America a couple of months before that and now I'm in Norwich, which is obviously the highlight of all these places. I do like Norwich actually. I used to be uh, based at RAF Marham, most of you have probably heard of that, when the tornadoes were there.
Okay, you can see that the aquascape is starting to take shape. We've just done the foreground for now, obviously. Okay, moving on to our Staragoyne. Exactly the same kind of principle as planting before with our tweezers. Grab the stem in between. And then we're just basically going to plant around, around the stones. And this will actually uh, get quite bushy, got quite compact. What happens is when, they, when, it, when it grows up vertically, uh, you'll need to trim it to stop it from kind of re, you know, completely filling the aquarium. So where, where have you trim it from? Oh, this is scissors here. So let's trim it now. Where I've trimmed it from, where the leaves protrude from the stem, two new shoots will appear. And then you can use this to promote really bushy growth. So what we, the effect will be eventually some really nice kind of bushy effect all around these rocks. A lot of people ask about um, maintaining the aquascape. So in a kind of old school fish tank with just regular gravel and plastic plants, you have like a, a gravel siphon, which is uh, basically a hose with a tube on it. And you dig the tube around the gravel, all the fish waste comes up and you, and you suck it all away. Well, obviously, if you do that with these plants, all the plants are going to disappear. So what I like to do is, is still use a siphon. So if you don't know what a siphon is, it's basically a, a length of hose where you put the hose in the aquarium, you suck on one end, and it draws the water through. And then what I'll do is just wave my hand just above the plants. That lifts up any waste organics and detritus and dirt, etc. And then you siphon away all that muck as part of your water change. So water changes is another important topic. In, a, in an aquarium environment, your fish, and in this case, your plants as well, they're always producing waste. And we need to dilute this waste with water changes. If we let it build up too much, uh, that waste will lead to algae issues. Most of you have heard of algae. It's basically um, you know, a nasty kind of growing green stuff that looks really ugly and will spoil your beautiful aquascape. So we really like to uh, defeat algae, or ideally, prevent it from happening in the first place. And one of the best ways to help prevent it is by doing these large frequent water changes. So I actually like to do like, at least a 50% water change once a week. It sounds like a lot of water, it is. But in my experience, my opinion, better to do that uh, than have to deal with algae all the time. So. The more water changes you do, basically, the better and the less chance of algae you get. If you can kind of make the water change process more simple, you know, I have a, um, I have a really long hose that goes into my garden. So I start the siphon off with a, <clears throat> I basically have a, a plastic pipe that hooks over the side of the aquarium where the inlet's here. I run the, the hose all the way into the garden I go to the garden, I suck on the end, and then the water's automatically draining out of the aquarium, and then I can water my plants with my old aquarium water, which is actually full of nutrients, full of good stuff for your garden as well. So it's quite a you know, green, ecologically friendly thing to do. One of the, let's talk about the health benefits of aquarium plants for the fish. So aquarium plants, they photosynthesize, so they use light and CO2 to grow, and they actually use harmful nutrients as food. So uh, fish produce ammonia, and one of the great plant foods is ammonia. So it's a really good idea to keep aquarium plants in your aquarium, even if you're not particularly interested in creating something like so elaborate and complex as this. It's still a good idea to grow aquarium plants. Um, they Plants, they also provide uh, shelter and security for the fish. Uh, you'll, there'll be areas for the fish to breed. They produce more oxygen, which is always a good thing, not just for the fish, but for the bacteria, the beneficial bacteria. The good bacteria in an aquarium needs oxygen as well. So they just provide so many benefits. And if you have really healthy plant growth, if you have enough plants and you look after them really well, then you'll get rewarded with not only a, a beautiful aquarium, but the fish will be healthier, you'll get less algae issues. Everyone's a winner. Okay, moving on to our crypts. We, plant, we prepare these the same way as before. Remove the pots, remove the mineral wool, divide them into portions, 
And then I'm going to put those, let's put them here. And then same process to plant, grab it in between your tweezers. And then I'm going to plant this just behind the Staragoyne. Perfect mid-ground plant. This is uh, Cryptocoryne Wendetii Tropica. This will grow about 15 to 20 centimeters tall, and the leaves will eventually turn a dark green, brown color, and the leaves will go into like a hammered effect, like a wrinkled effect, which look really beautiful. So at the moment, these have been grown out of water. We call this emergent growth. And you can see, well, it's kind of quite robust. It's supporting itself. This is grown in the nurseries hydroponically. It grows in the air, so the actual the plant has to support its own weight in the air. What happens is, once the plant adapts to its underwater growth, growth, which we call submerged growth, the leaves will change significantly. Like I said, it will go a dark green brown color with hammered leaves. <clears throat> and actually, they become a lot more kind of floppy. So they do change significantly. And what can happen with crypts in particular is they can kind of disintegrate as they adapt to their underwater growth. A lot of people panic when they start disintegrating, but if it's got a healthy root structure, which these have already, then it will grow new leaves pretty much straight away, and these, this, these will be adapted to the underwater form, so they'll be absolutely fine in the longer term. Uh, this is a good example. You can see this leaf here. That started to melt already, so we can remove that. And by removing that, that's promoting new growth. And what happens is if, if you leave an unhealthy leaf on there and plant it, that plant's going to use a lot of energy into trying to repair that old leaf. So it's just best to remove it, and then it will use that energy to produce new healthy growth. So I'm going to be a bit lazy now. I'm going to group a load together and then push them in with my finger. <clears throat> so let's talk about fish. We probably would wait two or three weeks before we added any fish in here. This gives us the, the plants a chance to establish themselves. The soil actually can leach some nutrients as well. So we need to do you know, large frequent water changes to dilute those nutrients. And then during this week, two week period, the, the filter will become more mature as the plants grow and the soil leaches these nutrients. This helps to feed the, fil the filter bacteria. And actually, when you add your fish, you know, a couple of weeks later, they will be absolutely fine. The trouble is, if you add fish straight away into a new aquarium, you can have what we call new tank syndrome. And the fish uh, will suffer from ammonia poisoning, basically. So by planting into uh, you know, an established aquarium, or at least two-week-old aquarium, where those plants have the ability to use the ammonia, we can add those fish out of absolutely no problem. Another reason why aquarium plants are a great thing, if you planted into a non, sorry, if you added fish into a non-planted aquarium, it's a, it's a lot more of a, it's a very different process to getting the, getting the aquarium ready for the fish. You know, you, you might have to add certain products, test the water frequently, and do lots of other business, whereas plants, you know, they allow a, a much more speedy introduction of fish with no problems. Okay, time to add our background plants. Who's heard of Amazon Swords? Hey. So one of the, one of the kind of classic original aquarium plants, Amazon Sword. The scientific name is Echinodorus bleri. Uh, named after Heiko Blair's mother, who's a famous fish explorer. From, I, think, I think it was discovered in like the 60s. But it's a real classic aquarium plant, very easy, fast growing, and uh, a beautiful plant that will grow 
quite tall, up to 60 centimetres tall, if not more, and a perfect background plant. So exactly the same process as before to prepare it. Just remove our pot like so. Grab our mineral wall, divide that into half. And then we can, you can trim or you can just tear the roots back slightly to make the planting easier. And then what I like to do is just inspect the plant. If there's any unhealthy leaves, there's one there with a bit of browning on the edge. You can just remove that. Another one there as well. And then you can plant with tweezers or your fingers, depending on whereabouts. It's quite tricky to get my hand down there, so I'll use some tweezers. Let's prop that in. Can't see it right now, but that will grow to the height of the aquarium, no problem. How's that looking from the front? Okay, one last pot here. Okay, so that's the foreground, midground, and um, uh, background plants done. Now we're going to attach our epiphyte plants. So these are plants that do best, or certainly, in fact, they need to be attached to the decor. So they're not planted in the soil. And you can buy them in a couple of different ways. You can buy them ready attached to a piece of wood like this. This is called aqua decor. And then if we're quite clever, we can make that look like it's part of the wood that's already there. Right, so, and this is a great plant. This is called uh, Microsorum trident. Adds an instant focal point. Looks really natural. Looks, you know, mature, makes the aquascape look more mature. Let's add another one. It's getting excited. Love this plant. Okay, what you can do is actually remove the plant from the wood and we can attach that separately. So what I'm going to do is just wedge it in between this bit of wood here. And I think we'll put another one there. I've just realised I don't like those Amazon swords there. Is it, it's got a really nice triangular look to it. And with these in the background here, it just doesn't look so well balanced. So I'm actually going to put those here. That's better. One more crypt. Just because I love them so much. Put that one here. And then a spray. I think we could get away with another fern up here, couldn't we? Let's go for that. Maybe even one in there.
Marcus Sorum is one of the, the most kind of dangerous plants to dry out. If it dries out too much, it will die really, really quickly. So it's really important that we keep this one wet in particular. Also the Echinodorus, the Amazon sword. Important that we don't let that dry out too much. Okay, guys, that is the aquascape complete. We're not going to fill it up with water today. It's going to be transported to Awaze headquarters. Hopefully, they're going to transport it without destroying it, refill it, and look after it, no pressure. So I really hope you enjoyed that, guys. I've really loved bringing this workshop to you. Thanks so much again to Awaze for inviting me along. Thanks so much for coming. I hope you've learned a few things and been inspired, maybe, uh, check me out on YouTube, I'm on Instagram as well. You can see loads more aquascaping content. And yeah, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. <laughs>